In December, something unthinkable happened in central Kenya. In Nyeri County, to be precise. And I'm beginning to believe that's the moment President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta decided to start dealing with his deputy ruthlessly the way he's doing now. On that fateful day, the deputy president William Samai Ruto conducted a major fundraiser for a church in Nyeri Town constituency. If you've forgotten, allow me to refresh your memory a bit. That's the day the Nyeri Town member of parliament, Wambungu Gujiri, was invited by the DP to address the gathering, but Wambugu refused. He didn't utter a word. But that's not the unthinkable thing. On that fateful day, ahead of the deputy president's arrival, two camps of youths were engaging themselves in running battles. These youths wanted to prove who between the deputy president William Ruto and President Rumuge Kenyatta was popular in central Kenya. So the youth engaged themselves in the running battles. And we know how that story ended. But again, that's not the unthinkable thing. The unthinkable thing is that finally, the t-shirts bearing the name or the t-shirts branding branded President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta were burnt down by the youths. So basically, the deputy president witnessed t-shirts bearing the names President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta being burnt. And of course, the president has more intelligence than we do. So probably they, they trailed back to the people who are responsible for the burning of those t-shirts. And their tracing ended up at the deputy president William Samuel Ruto's doorstep. Because from that day up to now, the president has been ruthless. And again, remember, that particular event happened hardly a month after the president had held another meeting or had convened this, the Mount Kenya Leaders Forum at Sagana. And we all know that the motive of that meeting at Sagana was basically for President Ruru Kenyatta to take charge of central Kenya politics or the larger Mount Kenya region politics. But now, a month later, the DP is in Nyeri County to prove who was popular between them. He is witness, witnessing the T-shirts being banned. And from that, from that moment, for those who have been following the politics very closely, it was in December, I think around 18th, 19th. So from January, the president basically changed. We now started witnessing a totally different president. But the coronavirus came. And reggae was slowed. So last week and this week have been defining moments for Jubilee as a political party. And the president is now ruthless to his deputy. The president began by signing a contract, I mean signing a coalition agreement with Khan on fourth, without even involving the DP. The president then went and kicked out, and the president then went and convened a jubilee parliamentary group meeting for the senators at State House. Again, the DP was not invited, was not involved. From there, the president then went ahead and fired William Ruto's key allies at the Senate, that is Susan Kehika and Kipchumba Murkomen. Then yesterday, the bomb. The president tasked Rafael Toyo to kick out five senators, five nominated senators from Jubilee Party. So today, I want us to look at the reasons why President Uhuru Mwe Kenyatta is kicking out the five senators. But before we do that, if you are banking on this video for the first time, 
I want you to take a second or two and hit the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this, you get notified. Now back to the main issue. Yesterday, Rafael Tujo read to Kenyans five names of nominated senators to be kicked out by Jubilee Party. There was amongst these five, there, 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 some of them are unknown. But there is uh, Millicent Omanga, there is Mary Senator, there is Victor Pregay, there is Naomi Jilo Wako, and then there is Faldaha Iman. Some of them, I don't even know them. These five senators are going to be kicked out for what to you called gross misconduct. The party leader called them for a meeting. They didn't attend the meeting. They didn't apologize. Send apologies. And again, on the other side, they were on the list of the people who were opposing the changes by President Urumuge Kenyatta. But one senator, one senator has already changed her mind and wrote a very short poem in the name of explaining herself. She's Senator Christine Zawadi. She did not attend that meeting, but on yesterday she wrote a letter addressed to Irungu Kangata, who is the whip, and she explained why she didn't attend. I normally have problems reading from the phone. So he's saying, the reason for my non-attendance is because of transport and logical, logistical barriers that have been erected by the government to curtail COVID-19. I was out of Nairobi Metropolitan as at the time of the meeting. However, I do hereby endorse the resolutions of the said PG meeting. For abundance of any doubt, my new leaders for Jubilee in the Senate are as follows. Pugisho, Pachita Leader, Fatuma Dulo, signed. But why is President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta keen on kicking out these senators? I've always maintained here that in politics, everything is normally done to achieve certain objectives. So what are the objectives which the president wants to achieve? Number one, why the president wants to kick these people out is the war of numbers. For a very long time, especially in Jubilee, the allies of the duty president have always bragged how they control the numbers, how they have the numbers at the Senate, how they have the numbers at the National Assembly. So when the voting took place at the at State House, the State House announced that 20 senators had actually appended their signatures. But the allies of the deputy president disputed those figures. And according to their figures, the only people who attended that meeting were 11, 11 senators. So where were the rest? Jubilee Party has six senators nominated. So where were they? And where, which side did they vote with? Now the mere fact that these senators were supposed to be present and were supposed to vote and they absented themselves is giving William Ruto and his allies the bragging rights about the number. So that one had to be stopped. So the president has stopped that. He has asked to you, write a letter to these people. And we are sending them out. So if Ruto had those numbers and then you reduce the numbers with five senators, then it tells you the president has more numbers than his deputy. So I think the whole contest is about the numbers. Number two, I think the president is also keen on controlling Jubilee Party. He wants to take full charge of Jubilee Party. And that's why the moment the president announced that these guys, I mean, the moment Rafael Tuyu announced that these guys were going to be kicked out of the party, Aden Duale 
changed his Facebook profile page. He removed the one which was there. Akaweka ile ya Konauru. Davidson Cook <laughs> decided to also write a very long poem, love poem, to President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta. How he's going to, to support the, how he supports the BBI, how he supports the handshake, how he supports Kanu. I mean, this is a guy who has been attacking the handshake left, right, and center. He did that also on his official page. Ade Dwale himself yesterday camped at Capitol Hill trying to meet trying to meet uh, Rai Lodinga. He didn't succeed. I am aware that Ben Washiali has been to Capitol Hill today twice <laughs> and he's also been to another office of a close ally of the president of Rai Lodinga today just trying to plead so that he can be saved. So I think the president is trying to take control of the party. So that the allies of the deputy president must now know that there is a guy who is in charge. And that guy is not the deputy president. It's the president. He can do whatever he wants to do. Number three, I think also it has to do with the Jubilee Parliamentary Group meeting. The president was embarrassed. Because people are even questioning whether there were 20 senators at state house. Because some senators have actually disowned the list of the members who purportedly signed that document. So what do you expect the president to do? He's now dealing with them ruthlessly. Where Okukuja, where Enda, 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 Enda. Then he's going to bring new members. Or if these guys will not go home, then when they come back, they'll tow the line. This People are going to tow line, starting with Omanga. Omanga has already claimed that he has, he has, she has not talked to the deputy president for two weeks. And he also believes that the president is a listening, a listening president. So if he will go and talk to the president, then the president will listen to her side. Basically, Omanga is also disowning Tanga Tanga. So what they want to do is once they disown Tanga Tanga and align themselves to the president, then that list will now be justified. And the president, I'm sure, once this case told the line, is going to call another parliamentary group for the senators. But at the National Assembly, the president is also keen on convening another parliamentary group meeting. So if you are a jubilee-nominated senator, so if you are a jubilee-nominated member of parliament, and the president is all, has already kicked out the nominated senators who refuse to attend these meetings, what will you do if the president convenes another meeting? The first people who are going to arrive to that particular meeting, if the president will indeed convene it, then that person are going to be the nominated members of parliament. So jubilee nominated members of parliament, all of them, will now start singing the songs of President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. Number four, I think the president is also keen on now taking on or on uh, dealing. Start, I mean, number four, I think the president is also dealing with sabotage at the National Assembly at the, and at the Senate. We know Kipchumba Murkomen was a, a key ally of the DP, Susan Kihika. Aden Dwale has been a, a bit mature enough. But the fact is the president has always been sabotaged at the National Assembly and at the Senate. So he wants to deal with this. So he's firing these people and making the changes. At the National Assembly, the only person who might be lucky is Aden Dwale. But the rest like Weshiali and the rest are going to go. People like Kimani Shongwa, the budget guy, Moses Kuria, all of them are likely to go. In fact, Moses Kuria is a bit unlucky because the president is even contemplating, recalling him. And lastly, number five, this marks the end of Jubilee. The president is simply telling his deputy, I don't have time for you. Please move on. Because there's nothing really which can explain what's currently happening in this country. And that's my take. And if you're bumping on this video for the first time, the best thing you can do is to hit the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this one, 
you get notified. And to the subscribers, I want to continue. Thank you guys for your continued support. Without that support, this channel would not be where it is today. And just like I keep on asking you guys for a small favor. It used to be one favor, but now two favors. The first favor is kindly visit www.vugvugu.com. There you'll always get latest news. But the request which I've consistently been making here, and a lot of you guys have been heeding to it, is to help me create interactions. How do you do that? Give the video, video thumbs up or thumbs down. Thumbs up if you like, thumbs down if you don't like the video. So that from there, we can know the kind of content which you guys like. So we can create more of such content. But the best one is just to drop your comment. What is your take on President Uhuru Mungai Kenyatta's move to kick out the allies of the duty president from the Senate? Is there something which I've left out? Thank you guys and please may you have a good day. Until next time, it's Lee Marquis.